Did you know that in 2024, it's estimated that there'll be around 7 billion smartphones worldwide? 10 years ago, there were just 1.3 billion smartphones. Isn't that just bloody crazy? So, because everyone's got a camera, it goes without saying that over the years, more and more horrifying clips have emerged. From a sudden avalanche in Russia to a surprise snake bite in India. My name's Ryan from Tragedy Tales, and once again, I've scoured the web. I've searched far and wide for the most shocking clips to ever grace the internet. So, as usual, strap yourselves in. Let's get right into it. This truly horrific footage was recorded on the 17th of August, 2023, in El Mina, Malaysia. That day was clear and sunny, the perfect weather for flying. Preparing for a routine flight, six passengers and two flight crew boarded a Beechcraft Model 390 private jet at the Langkawi International Airport in Malaysia. That day, the plane was under the command of an experienced 41-year-old pilot. He had significant overall flying experience, racking up over 6,275 flight hours in his career. However, the pilot only had 36 flight hours on this specific aircraft. Regardless, it's like riding a bike, right? You never forget it. So that day, the plane was set to fly from the Langkawi International Airport to Sultan Abdul Aziz Shah Airport, a short and straightforward journey across Malaysia. As the passengers clambered aboard the small jet and fastened their seatbelts, this photo was snapped. It shows the passengers ready to take flight. All of them had no idea what horrors would soon unfold. As this was a journey that the passengers did often, they had zero worries in their mind and nothing was out of the ordinary. Before they knew it, the plane's engines were roaring and they took flight. So the flight went as you'd expect. It went off without any hitches until the aircraft approached its destination. The aircraft radioed in and then were cleared for landing. However, just two minutes away from the runway, all of a sudden, the plane lost contact with the control tower. Thinking that it must be just a lapse in the communication, staff awaited the plane's touchdown at the airport. They waited and waited and the plane didn't appear. It was only then that they noticed a huge cloud of black smoke billowing through the air. They knew this meant only one thing. The plane was given clearance to land at 2.50 p.m. And instead, it crashed into a nearby motorway. Not a single mayday call was received. All captured by various CCTV cameras and dash cams, you can see the plane impacting with the ground, coming down like a missile, striking the ground at an unbelievable speed. This dash cam footage shows a driver narrowly avoiding being hit by the plane. Amazingly, in one frame, you can see the aircraft in a nosedive, and then the next, it impacts with the ground and erupts into an inferno. Emergency services rushed to the scene, including Mohamed Saimi, a former member of the Malaysian Air Force. He said he saw the plane flying erratically through the sky, and not long after, he heard a loud boom. He sped towards the location, 
and obviously saw the remains of the aircraft, but he also saw a human body on fire. He was helpless to do anything. First responders arrived at the scene pretty shortly after that and cordoned off the area. Locals watched in horror as the plane continued to burn. Videos and images of the crash showed a truly harrowing scene. The motorway was covered with dark soot and scattered debris. The wreckage of the plane was on fire, with the dark smoke still flooding the air. Nobody survived. All six passengers and the two crew died instantly, making this photo eerily haunting. I can't even begin to imagine their final thoughts as they saw the ground getting closer and closer, knowing that they could do nothing to stop it. To add to the horror, in the crash, two more people who were just going by their day to day, driving on the motorway, were also killed, bringing the death toll to 10. So why did it crash, you're asking? Well, the black box was recovered from the aircraft, but as far as I can see, it's not been released to the public. Now, some people have speculated as to why it happened, and I'm of course no pilot, but by watching the various angles of the crash, it seems that the pilot made too sharp of a turn trying to turn into the airport. I wonder if he banked too hard and caused the engine to stall and then could do nothing to save it. But of course, this is purely speculation. It's a well-known fact that snakes aren't to be trifled with, but snakes are generally shy and they won't attack unless they're provoked. So it's best to leave them be. If you see a snake in the wild, just walk away. It seems that the man in this story just didn't know this, or at least he did, but he just didn't care. This story begins in India on the 23rd of August, 2021, in the Saran district during the festival of Rashka Bandhan. For a bit of background, Rashka Bandhan is a popular and traditionally Hindu ceremony that is central to the festival of the same name celebrated in South Asia. The expression Rashka Bandhan literally means the bond of protection, obligation or care. The main goal of this festival is to celebrate the bond between brothers and sisters. And on this day, sisters tie a raki, basically a, a small bracelet around their brother's wrists, symbolizing their love, care and protection for each other. Brothers, in return, often give gifts or tokens of appreciation to their sisters. Now this is when 25-year-old snake charmer Man Mohan comes in. That year, he wanted to push the boat out and celebrate in a way that was unique to him. Apparently, Man Mohan used to cure people of snake bites, and being a snake charmer and extremely fond of snakes in general, that year, he wanted to celebrate the festival by tying a bracelet to a pair of snakes, a very, very silly idea. An idea that would end in tragic consequences. All captured on video, Manmohan engaged in the ceremony. You can see him holding two snakes of unknown species from their tails, while his sisters and mother stood by, handing him all the things that he required. Conducting this ceremony with snakes was so bizarre that soon a crowd of people had gathered around to watch him conduct the ceremony with the snakes. However, unfortunately, snakes don't have rituals as humans do. Just as Manmohan was distracted by something, one of the snakes slowly makes his way to his foot. And before he manages to notice, the snake lunges and takes a bite, injecting copious amounts of deadly venom. If you're not familiar with the effects of snake venom, while each snake contains a slightly different venom chemical makeup, once it enters the bloodstream, it begins to coagulate your blood. And if you don't find the anti-venom quick enough, your blood will thicken and thicken. It will thicken so much that your heart can no longer pump it through your veins, and therefore you die. There's also other types of venom that can attack the nervous system and actually paralyze you. So either way, you just don't wanna get bit by a snake especially if you don't know what snake it is. Despite seeming rather calm on the video, 
Soon after, Manmoham went into shock. This incident quickly escalated from a cultural celebration to a serious medical emergency. Manmohan, known for his fondness of snakes and his skill in treating snake bites, found himself needing urgent care. He was rushed to the hospital, but sadly, by then, it was just too late. Despite an antivenom being administered, he died in hospital during treatment. Now looking back at the video, it's clear to see that what he was doing was just absolutely crazy and, and silly, to be honest. Just look how crazy this all looks. Surely someone should have seen this coming. Toying with snakes is never a good idea. And just like in this entry, playing with venomous snakes can end in fatality. This tragic footage was captured on August the 28th, 2023 in Florida. Pompano Beach. That fateful day, a Florida fire rescue helicopter was called out on an emergency mission. On the chopper that day were three first responders, including 50-year-old Terry Jackson, Broward Sheriff's office captain. This was a routine operation, one that they'd done countless times before. They were used to saving lives on the daily. So that morning, after receiving an emergency call, at around 8.30, they suited up and took off into the blue skies. As the helicopter blades whirled through the air, completely out of the blue, just before 9 a.m., the helicopter encountered a severe mechanical issue. We're having uh, mechanical issues while in flight. We're headed back to our station. You can have the ground transport. As the situation rapidly deteriorated, the crew radioed in that they were having mechanical issues and that they were going to return to base. As they turned around and traveled back to base, black smoke began billowing from the engine, and looking behind them, a small fire had broken out. This video was then recorded, showing the helicopter racing back and showing the black smoke coming out of it. It was at this point that the pilot radioed in, detailing that they'd now had an engine failure and requesting priority for the runway. We just had an engine failure. Uh, we're gonna require priority. For a runway, please, or just an emergency. Sadly, as they rushed back to base, suddenly the tail of the helicopter split apart mid air. Despite the pilot's efforts to stabilize the chopper, it spiraled out of control. They were going down. All captured on video, the helicopter can be seen spinning out of control and plummeting into the ground, impacting a residential apartment in Pompano Beach. Upon impact, it erupted into flames. The crash was so severe that initial responders thought a bomb had gone off. Sadly, 65-year-old Lauren Wheaton, who was sleeping in her apartment, was killed when the chopper impacted the roof. Her boyfriend had actually gone to the toilet and heard a loud bang, and it was only when he came back in, he saw that a helicopter had landed in the house. If he hadn't gone to the toilet, he would have died too. First responders and fire crew rushed to the scene and tried desperately to quell the flames. Astonishingly, in all the chaos, two of the crew members crawled out of the badly damaged chopper, dragging themselves onto the roof. Sadly, however, Ernst wasn't so lucky. After the impact, he was pinned beneath rubble, and with no way to escape, he succumbed to the flames. Once the fire was put out, a gaping hole was left in the apartment. It was reduced to ashes. This clip went viral, shocking the local community and the world. A peaceful neighborhood was quickly turned into something straight out of hell. But the worst part about all of this, the helicopter crashed just a mile away from the intended runway. If it had held together for just a couple more minutes, this entire ordeal would have been avoided.
The Grand Canyon is often considered one of the world's great wonders, carved out of sandstone by the Colorado River in Arizona in the United States. The Grand Canyon stretches 277 miles long, up to 18 miles wide, and attains a depth of over a mile. It's truly colossal. The site is also ancient. Being around five to six million years old, it attracts over five million visitors each year from all across the globe. Sadly, however, a small minority of these visitors never return home. Warning signs are placed all across the park, warning people not to go over the metal railings under any circumstances. These signs aren't placed here for no reason. They've been installed due to the sheer amount of people who have tumbled and fell to their death at the Grand Canyon. It's also really hot, and a lot of people underestimate how hot it can get on these trails. Around 12 deaths happen each year, and in total, around 900 people have died at the Grand Canyon since the 1800s. Some visitors fall off while hopping from one rock to another or posing for photos, while some people are a bit more careless. For example, a 38-year-old father from Texas was pretending to fall to scare his daughter, but he accidentally lost his footing and actually tumbled 400 feet to his death, right in front of his daughter. But on June the 3rd, 2017, a 33-year-old man named Cole Wagonecht decided that he would visit the canyon to see the views for himself. That hot summer day, Cole ventured onto the trails and was amazed by the views. He was so amazed, in fact, that he decided to have a drink of alcohol. And before long, he was intoxicated. And it was at this point that Cole decided to take this visit to the Grand Canyon to the next level. Cole saw a nice rock to sit on, and as other hikers watched in horror, Cole climbed over the protective fences and sat precariously on this rock near the canyon's edge. He sat there for a while, holding the rock, telling people behind him how beautiful the views were. Just come back, man. Just come back. It is, but... <laughs> hey, no native grass, girl! Other hikers who were standing on the correct side of the fence told Cole to be careful. But as stubborn as we all are, especially after having a drink, Cole ignored them and continued to take in the view. He remained near the edge, admiring the view for some time. As people were talking to him, he was slurring his words and continuing to detail how beautiful the scenery was. As the other hikers told him to come back, in a moment of pure horror, Cole let go of the rock that he was holding onto and tumbled backwards. Just come back, man. Just come back. Oh, yeah, I'll come back sometime. Oh, this is fucking beautiful. It is, but. <laughs> Hey, no native grass, girl. Oh, oh shit, is he okay? Oh, shit, man. No, no, don't, look, don't look, don't look. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. We told him to come back up. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. The crowd of people watched in horror as Cole fell 182 feet to his death. As Cole tumbled down the rocky face, spectators told others not to look. The damage I can imagine was just catastrophic. 911 was called and they said that a man was most likely dead in the Grand Canyon and a rescue helicopter was dispatched. When they arrived there, they all but assumed that Cole was dead until they found a pulse. They airlifted him to hospital where they desperately tried to save his life. The fall had resulted in horrific injuries. Cole had sustained heavy brain damage, two collapsed lungs, a broken neck, and a broken back. But Cole was literally still kicking. Doctors performed a miracle and saved Cole's life. Amazingly, he lived to tell the tale. Not something that most people who take a fall like that can do. Here, Cole can be seen recorded by his brother five years after the incident. Cole! This is my brother that fell in the Grand Canyon. I know some of y'all been asking about him. 
seeing if he's all right, and I guess. Uh, I'm doing okay, except for the scars. While you can see he's got some nasty scars and still suffering from some brain damage, Cole was thankful to be alive. When his brother asked about the view, Cole replied, the view was great, all but the stop. I broke my neck and I broke my back and I'm still kicking, literally. How was the view? <laughs> uh, it was great, all but the stop. <laughs> I'm sure this is a lesson that Cole will never, ever forget. But what a truly astonishing tale of recovery, and of course, a tale of caution. When you're in an ancient national park with lethal drops everywhere, you've got to be careful. While the sights are epic, they aren't worth dying for. One wrong move, one miscalculation, and it's all over. Your chances of dying while skiing or snowboarding are extremely low. Statistically speaking, you are 100 times more likely to die canoeing than you are skiing down some slopes. However, this doesn't mean it's safe. While skiing on the slopes is all well and fine, when you're skiing on a non-commercial mountaintop and skiing across cliff edges, things start to get a little more dangerous. You could be skiing along, enjoying the view, and without a second's warning, you could be buried beneath thousands and thousands of tons of snow, your body never recovered. While there are various methods of testing snow for avalanches, they're never 100% reliable, and therefore deaths do occur while skiing. Not just from avalanches, but also just skiing in general. You could fall and break your neck, etc. Just to prove this point, I've already covered a ski horror story already on this channel, where a man was skiing alone and suddenly fell into a crevasse. By just pure luck, this man was able to stop himself falling deep into the ground and was actually eventually saved by his friends who were watching on the ledge. However, this insane footage was recorded in late November of 2022. That cold November day, a group of skiers set out to explore the Upper Angara mountain range, a 120 mile long group of mountains located in Buryatia, Russia, part of the Stanovoy Highlands. With a peak altitude of 2,641 meters, the Angara mountain range is a fairly low altitude excursion, one that's often visited by avid skiers. Among them was a man who would soon find himself in a very, very horrific situation. As the group skied along the edges of the mountain, I can imagine them taking in the views, enjoying their time. It's a truly alien and lunar atmosphere. All captured on video, the leader of the group of skiers zooms ahead of the pack and reaches what they thought was the ridge of the mountain. Here, the unnamed guide enjoys the view, skiing along the edge of the ridge. But all of a sudden, as he did, the snow beneath his very feet separated like the Red Sea. His presence had caused a humongous avalanche what the group didn't realize was that the guide had unknowingly skied on a snow cornice, an overhanging ledge of snow on a ridge or the crest of a mountain. It's essentially a false platform waiting to crumble. And while you can stand on them, you never know when it's all going to crumble. The video from the scene showed the skier falling between the huge chunks of snow and within just a moment, he disappeared out of view. The rest of the group captured in the footage, approached the edge and peered over the near vertical drop in disbelief. To their absolute horror, their friend had vanished and in his place lay a large drop. He was nowhere to be seen. They stood there for a few seconds, wondering what they could do to save their guide. But at that point, they themselves were risking their lives even being stood near the edge. Now this, you won't believe. Miraculously, 
after the camera had stopped rolling, rescue teams scoured the area and managed to find the man alive, buried under the snow. The guide was airlifted to the hospital, and you won't believe this either, despite falling down a mountain's precipice, somehow he was uninjured. He had not sustained a single injury. More amazingly, the guide returned to the ski slopes the following year. This video serves as a stark reminder of the importance of caution and expertise when tackling the challenges posed by nature. The guide's lapse in judgment nearly resulted in a fatal accident. Perhaps he'll think twice before putting on those skis. But that is the end of the video. Watching these clips back, I'm sat here in pure shock. Where do I even start? The Malaysian plane crash was just awfully tragic. And the fact that two innocent people lost their lives who were just going about their day to day, it just isn't fair. So far, there isn't a 100% reason as to why it crashed. But yeah, it's assumed that they just banked too hard and stalled. Man Moham, who was bitten by the snake, Again, I'm lost for words. The festival that he was celebrating was supposed to bring together brothers and sisters, not snakes and man. It's no wonder they attacked after being held in the air for so long, but I wish he didn't have to pay the ultimate price for this serious oversight. The chopper that crashed in Florida is truly sad because they were so close to the runway, so close to safety, and yet it wasn't meant to be. Cole, who fell into the Grand Canyon, is seriously lucky to be alive. I don't think he'll be visiting anytime soon. And the man who fell down the side of the mountain is just crazy. How he managed to survive not only falling down the mountain, but also coming out completely unscathed. I don't know. It's beyond belief. And even entering back onto the mountain the following year, that guide is a real trooper indeed. But most importantly... What did you think of this one? I'm interested in all your thoughts below. And as I say in all my videos, I do try and read every single comment, including the mean ones. So I'm interested in all your thoughts below. But as always, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye bye. <laughs>